And good morning. Oh look, look we've got a bright sunny day. Uh, starting starting overhead. Uh, no studio lights. No, no, okay. So, new camera, microphone. Uh, could be a better video for it. And uh, I guess that means a, a new process with me. Um, oh, something I kind of importantly wanted to speak about today. Uh, otherwise I really wouldn't want to get in from on in in front of the camera. Right, so so why why am I yammering? Okay, maybe, maybe I haven't made friends with this camera, and, and being the first day of a new camera, uh, you know, I feel we're going to have this moment. So, uh, look, any, anyone who's watching these videos, uh, look, I do say thank you. Uh, I noticed yesterday in the metrics that um, it looks like somebody had actually watched a few of them in a row, uh, which to me is huge. Uh, I hadn't seen that yet, and uh, certainly hadn't seen more than more than even a handful of people ever to watch one video. So, what that what that means to me is huge. Uh, I'd like to think that at some point somebody will see these videos, that they might see some worth in the message in these videos, and might realise that by sharing the message with politicians, with friends, with uh, you know people in, in relevant areas, uh, that this this message might be able to go around. And uh, therefore, I mean, the the idea is to bring about world peace. And uh, that is a term as a disconnect because it sounds like work, but uh, it's, it's not work, it's actually joy. And uh, it's joy done or created at the individual level. And uh, that, that is my purpose of today's video. Is In, in the last week or so I've, I've had the, the good time, good fortune to be able to spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with friends. Friends I've known for a long time. And uh, when chatting about their life or chatting about the things that matter to them, and that's usually things like relationships and, and stability in the house environment and, uh, and work. And recognising that on their present path, they didn't even have a vision towards eventual happiness. That I was seeing their desire to, to climb in the, in the office place to, you know, for, for more promotion, for, for the respective growth over time that, uh, that they're due. And when we stopped and investigated the actual aspects of their role that bring them joy, and there was, there was none of that, and all of the training roles that they wanted to work towards or develop towards weren't things that would necessarily develop them personally, it would just make them better competitive for a future interview, for a different, you know, for, for climbing the ranks, so to speak. And once we actually stood outside of the conversation, and that's the, the joy of having a friend or somebody else who's not so connected to it, to just, just be able to take a step back. And we, we looked at the overall value, the, the, the worth that that workplace was bringing them. And obviously, you know, it gives them the benefit of paying their rent and, and doing the things that they need to do. But, you know, w was it setting them up for independence or was it guaranteeing them something better towards the future? And... I guess, I guess the, the verdict we came to and the, the point of my lead in is that it probably wasn't. So when we stopped and looked at what they wanted deep down and we looked at the fears and the reasons why in their life they weren't being successful following the things close to their heart, we recognised so many of what the stumbling blocks were. And, and of course, in the back of my head, I've got this model going on of what it is that I wish to offer for the people. And, and I couldn't help but recognise that each of the stumbling blocks in their life versus a vision that I'd seen once in my life that would bring happiness for everybody in a workforce and a whole population. And I recognise that it supports people in a way that they, they deeply call out for, their hearts deeply crave. And so the point of this video, I guess, is to explore the dual-sided coin that is when we work, and I say work, but when we live, in accordance to our heart and our desires that are, are genuine with our humanness, that uh, you know, nurturing to our society, our family, and these things that it looks like we all have a craving for, that ultimate happiness can be found. But under the current system, and this is where I'd like to decide step a little bit to look at in, this, in the ways that it fails us, we don't even see them anymore because they've become a prison cell that we've accepted our fate and that we won't go beyond a set of bars or a set of limitations and I mean any, anyone that was a self-help guru and I'm, I'm not a self-help guru and I, I don't have large words of uh, inspiration I guess to share other than obviously sharing a vision towards 
how to bring about world peace. But that, that as I say, isn't mine. That's just a vision I've, I've got to share, and, and that's that's a bit of a, you know, I call, I call it a burden, but I guess it's my arc. And uh, as much as I've rejected all my life to do it, I've found that it's it's chased me in ways that means I have to do it. And uh, with this year, I've just decided that we, we need to do it. So. Uh, yeah, a couple of days after my birthday this year, I guess I just took a look at the, the state of the world and was so deeply fearful for the immediate future and terrified, absolutely petrified. And so I had two options. I could either be the deer in headlights and I could freeze or I could choose to run. And uh, in this instance, running is, is, is running in the most healthier ways. The, the adrenaline I'm burning in doing this, and uh, there's no adrenaline in this moment, maybe a little. Um, for the last few weeks that I've been doing these videos, I've been, I've been sleeping wonderfully. I've been, every other aspect of my life has been coming together. And I, and I say sleeping wonderfully, I mean my, my actual hours of sleep are quite limited, but the, the quality of my sleep is very deep. You know, there's no, I, I'm not having a fantasy dreamland in my head where I'm, I'm you know, basically deeply unhappy with the, the events of the world around me. Uh, in my own connection to the world, my own capability of giving something back. And I, and I do find in reflection in the last couple of decades that my dream world as, as a writer has been fantastic, lots of great concepts and lots of things to, to talk about. But it is filled with drama. And in the last couple of weeks since I've been doing these videos, I don't have any of that conscientious dreaming. I'm just crashed out, sleeping like a, a young child. It's fantastic. So I think, thank you, what is that about? I think when, not again, sorry, we're playing a game of boxing. It gets lifting up the other paw now to have another crack. Um, when we, when we, I'm going to change tack a little bit now. When we change and follow our passion, I feel that our psyche is deeply rewarded in ways that makes us as people just way better off for it. No, that's not going to work out. Bloody. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take my glass of water before it gets spilled. Um, right, so when we, when we follow our passion, and our passion doesn't have to be the perfect job, but it, it has to be on a timeline that will bring us about the things that we want down the track. It has to be connected to a sense of a community where we feel safe. And that's a large part of what will prop up this vision ultimately, is that if people can't understand what the motivations are for bringing about this change, and I personally don't believe there's ever been a time in history where so many people have been motivated towards change. And I'm, I'm playing with statistics a little bit there. There's more people on the planet. So using terms like there's more people, that's a truth. You know, is, is it the greatest percentage of the people ever in the history of humanity? No, I don't know. But I, I do feel that for the sheer numbers that we'd be able to get and the way that once scales get big enough in a workforce or in, in any system, opportunities that that aren't available in, in smaller systems present themselves. And so a lot of this vision is about this, this cohesive whole and in all the ways at which it can support itself. And the biggest aspect that even I can't see, but in the vision it, it just worked out and I, and I do, I guess, that, that whimsical part of fantasy in me thinks, oh yeah, it's possible. And there's a video that's not on this main channel talking about the ultimate vision towards world peace. If, if I had you know, power beyond my control. And it talks about if we were to be backed by altruists, people who can't spend their money towards anything better. And the reason, the motivation for why they might just get on board is that their world can't be made any safer or happier. Because at the end of the day, they have to rub shoulders or their society flows into the society that is the rest of the world. And so when production lines are filled with unhappy workers, you know, there's less than perfect products made out, or when scales of production are ramped up so much and that the human quality control is so little because of ultimate profit. And these models don't work in the, in the new paradigm that I'd be pitching, which is everything is built around quality of life. And so the notion of when we've got such a large workforce, potentially high levels of unemployment, some simple roles is things like just triple checking a product, making sure that it is working before it goes out the door. And when you offer such, you know, I want to say pedantic roles, when you, when you offer such basic roles to people, um, every 
there's so much opportunity for employment that I'd like to believe we have a less unemployed workforce and also because we're propping people up to be more capable in their personal power and, and taking away much of their fears so that they're able to feel more capable of contributing. But the, the flow-on effect in terms of having such quality assurance in place and such check is that the downtime that people feel and the, the dissatisfaction and the frustrations really start to fall by the wayside at so many levels. And that is quite fundamental towards going forward. But when, it look, when we look at the potential flow on from the, the I'll call them the super rich, and if you're watching this, the super rich, wow, good on you, it's not in 4K, it's not in HDR, and uh, you know, it, it's, um, eh, you know, maybe I should be wearing a collared shirt. When, when we look at the flow on effect from people who might choose to back a model that brings about happiness, in the world for their own selfish needs. And please, I'm not being personal there. I've described my will to bring about world peace for selfish needs too. And it comes down to having a child that I wish to raise in the world that I would like to feel that, that they've got a, a, a rosier future, if you will. So if that sort of money comes on board, what it allows us to do in terms of buying out much of the problems in the private sector supporting a lot of the failing systems in ways that they're leading to further dissatisfaction either for the planet or for the people. A lot of the vision starts to come together in ways that takes it out of the realm of being inconceivable to being how could we not have conceived it earlier and that is the nature of a paradigm shift. Once you're in it you kind of can't see the world existing in any other way and so we're going to have a generational divide in terms of the people who are first on board. And that, that, when I say generational, I don't mean any of the different age brackets in the world at the moment. More so um, from, from anybody who starts in the organisation who knows the pain of the old world versus the newer generations. And it isn't a case of wanting to shelter them, but it is a case of nurturing them in a, in a different environment. And I guess that will then create a different output in terms of their personalities or their, their sense of connectedness in, in society. But I, I do believe with a lot of the people who will first join, they'll do it for the need of, and I say this model accounts for homeless and it accounts for the unemployed um, and, and even returning quality of life in, in the elderly, which, I mean, these three sectors alone pretty much gets motivation for governments to be working with us, even without any further pitch. And I actually, when I pitch off to governments, and I've asked them to send my emails forward to the embassy so that world governments can, can get sort of the said construct because there's a lot of steps that I, I won't put on camera because they're not relevant to the people I'm trying to contact here. But there are so many ways in which government is remunerated and propped up and supported at a time when most governments are probably feeling a little bit lonely, a little bit isolated and a little bit lacking at the moment in terms of the burden of their roles and their inability to have the, the power ultimately to bring about the changes that they need or to support the people in ways that they, they need to. It's, it's been a fairly tumultuous couple of decades, a fairly tumultuous couple of years. And uh, when we look at a propped up government, when we look at a lot of the sicknesses dropping off, and I mean, I, I've said in previous videos this notion of when politicians need to provide um, successes in a four year term, that it, the, the lack of being able to do long-term plays really robs the people of much of the wealth or much of the, much of the genius that we, we employ them to do at the, the top of the stack, top of the pile. And I say stack, so I really see it all as a house of cards. And um, there, there's so many ways in which if we prop things up properly that the people will feel better at, at just so many levels. And so even the people who come on board initially the, the safety that they feel, the, uh, the joy that they're then capable of channeling. And I kind of think joy is, is one of the, the evolved parts. So, you know, people might come in and it might be a while before they can find what they, they consider a digestible form of happiness, that they, they start to acknowledge after weeks or months that uh, there's no reason for them to maintain old patterns of mindset where they, they naturally autopilot in, uh, in dissatisfaction or being... Um, defensive, I guess, of, of the world around them, um, in, feeling insecure, arguably. And, and we need to, in order to survive in the present world. Th these are skill sets that we have to nurture in order to succeed or to be successful or survive. And so as our mindsets gradually 
um, sort of, I'd say ebb and flow, but the, the constant working and, and the, the constant action in a scenario whereby we're propped up to feel happy and to feel better, better for it, better, better for it, better, better engaged, um, better, better needed um, in, in meaningful ways. So that starts to work on, I always refer to, to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but once we start to let a person be their actualized self, the concept of happiness becomes, and I'd like to say it's more of a, a foundation base, because there are certainly uh, emotional states that are higher than happiness. And most people refer to love as the ultimate state of, of being, but obviously enlightenment is, you know, and so... I'm not saying we want to be an enlightened population, but I'd like to think that if we're in a better position, that the jump to enlightenment isn't isn't so huge. And uh, so, so I, I usually put joy at the at sort of the pinnacle of, of what is standard human emotion that, that we are capable of having fleeting moments of. It would seem, but if we if we change our society around it in such a way that that, that is sought out, and as I say, fundamentally sought out. Sought out in the way that the products don't fail us so much, and that our downtime chasing ways to make the money we've already invested in products to be effective because they're broken. You know, we have to we have to ring up and complain about the fact that it's broken. We have to follow a service channel, and uh, often with that at a hollow sense of, well, I'm just going to get another one of the same thing. What, what's you know, three of them have already broken. Is it really worth continuing down this path? And, and most people don't want to engage uh, consumer rights actions and. You know, most people are not litigious by heart. And when we change up our society in a way that we prop up the best of a person, and this comes around now to the workplace, okay? So this year I'm talking about the foundation, right? It's where you wake up each day and you feel a certain level of positivity and you go about your day, but you bring that into your workplace. And I've already described that the workplace is little hours per day bare minimal and ideally training is a component of uh, changing a person's skill set towards things that is more in line with what they feel that they would like to do, uh, that they feel that they'd be good at, that uh, might be right vocation for them, that they then bit by bit become more educated, more capable of doing a role down a pathway that is technically uh, or is more technical in nature, you know, might, might require more skill. And we, we all are aware of the benefits of education and usually how that is remunerated in a, in a better hourly rate once we go to the workforce because we're doing a skill set that's more skillful. So when human beings can live in a society where they don't feel that they're stuck in some sort of a grind at any point, that they recognise that they've been propped up with their property and, and all the things that they, they usually get stuck being very ineffective with their wealth paying interest and propping up every other um, independent and, and, and private institution, then people become happier, definitely. People become capable of being more joyful and flowing through, and, and definitely their workplace output is aligned with that. But I also believe that the private sector in the present model would be quite happy to jump ship into this model. And so anybody that's fearful that this model might be competitive against them at some level, or it might... Um, deprecate their industry. That's quite the opposite of uh, what we would be trying to set out to achieve. But I also feel that savvy investors would realise that the sooner they get on board to this transitioning model, the more reward that is there for them. Now, anyone who's got money, more than what is typically a person's wealth over the course of a lifetime, if they bring that into said organisation, they've essentially jumped forward in said organisation so much that the amount of wealth that they will be remunerating, or it's a return on investment, 